We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 4 of 2022, with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler. On tonight's podcast, in the US, Prince Andrew settles out of court in a civil sexual assault case. In Britain, there's anger over comedian Jimmy Carr's Roma joke. In the US, the first woman is cured of HIV. And Elon Musk's getting into hot water over allegations of mistreatment of test subjects used in brain chip trials. This is Strange But True Radio for a mixed up generation. In the US, Prince Andrew settles out of court in a civil sexual assault case. There are now calls for clarity over Prince Andrew's role in public life. The Duke of York agreed to pay an undisclosed sum as part of the settlement and accepted Virginia Jaffray had suffered as a victim of abuse. He made no admission of liability or guilt and has always denied the allegations. Um, Phil, <laughs> I'm losing my voice as usual. I'm, I'm, I've got over COVID, but I'm, I'm, I've got a bit of a gruff voice this morning, so apologies. Um, do we know how much he's uh, he's paid uh, this Virginia Jaffray? I don't know. I, I heard the figures. The figure he paid out was 12 million quid. I don't know if that's true or not. Because he paid her and her charity. So um, her charity is in support of victims' rights. And the lawyers are saying, what a great success for the weak over the rich and powerful. That's mm. what they're saying. But for me, this is very, I find it all very odd from a legal standpoint. I mean, there's no admission of any guilt. And he ends up paying 12 million quid. So people are asking, where does the money come from? Obviously, from the royal estate. Um, he probably gets an allowance of a couple of million a year, or so, I don't know, a million a year or something, to spend down the pub, which isn't too bad, really. Yeah. And um, they are incredibly powerful and wealthy, the royal family, more so than actually they make out. Anyway, so... Because um, he's been stripped of various titles and various charities don't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Do we think that um, he could get all of that back? Or has... At this moment in time, it's unlikely. Mm. I don't know. It depends. Time is a good healer. I doubt it very much. I think he'll be put sent off to, to live a more private existence and not have so much official, so many official duties. Um, it's difficult to say. I, I don't know. It's very difficult. You know, the thing about this is that I find very odd is this woman, Virginia Dufresne, um, was accused him of sexual assault, not in London, New York, and the US Virgin Islands. Right. So in order to go to those, New York, she, well, she lived in New York, I think. But to go to New York with um, the film director guy what's his name the guy got busted um jeffrey epstein jeffrey epstein go there with him in an aircraft to london new york london and the u.s virgin islands mm. willingly in the knowledge so she goes to the, his his private island in the u.s virgin islands is sexually assaulted by prince andrew and having been sexually assaulted in new york by Prince Andrew, and then again to go to New York to be sexually assaulted by Prince, to go to London, sorry, again uh, to be sexually assaulted by Prince Andrew sounds a bit odd. Yeah. As if you're a woman who is taken somewhere by somebody and is sexually assaulted, you just don't go back to the same place again with that person. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. And if they're saying that she, she wasn't underage in any of those environments, none of them. Yeah. Because at there's... the time, it was in the law, according to the law, it was 16, as far as I know, in all of those situations. 
and in a private island it would be it, you know what is the law on a private island it's your your you're independent i suppose it's a us law but anyway yeah. what is she doing going to the same place over and over again to be sexually assaulted and in the photograph she doesn't exactly look miserable does she no she's standing next to the bloke who sexually assaulted her with her arm around him well, so this is a this is an interesting photo that you're talking about because um, I I've listened to various uh, commercial news media with uh, lady uh, a person called Lady Victoria. Now she reckons the uh, the infamous picture of Prince uh, Andrew, Geoffrey, and uh, and Miss oh, or Miss Maxine, uh, who's now in. Um, in, in in prison yes. um, is actually a doctored photo could of, be of three photos put together it could well be um, and I find that a very sort of interesting part of this story uh, yeah. there, there is a rule of thought that uh, Jeffrey is just out for the money um, I think she is and as you say something actually we need to say that she denies um, but there is it's a very murky story it would make a good movie actually one day uh not too not, not, not next month i don't think i could cope with it next month but it would, it would make in 20 years time when everyone's a bit older it would be it would be an interesting movie to see see how it wasn't all plays she, out wasn't, wasn't she paid for a non-disclosure settlement she was she's been paid this is i think the second amount of money that he's paid her well, I didn't. Wasn't she paid by Epstein five hundred thousand dollars or something? Yeah. So, so this is yet more uh, money that she's exactly. received. Um, so Lloyd's, of, you know, Lloyd's of London. Mm-hmm. Lloyd's of London produce six percent of the gross domestic product of the United Kingdom. They're a powerful institution. They insure things all over the world, and they insure insurance companies. And for that, they are paid handsomely, but, you know, they're taking massive risks. And they insure insurance companies against losing loads of money, in effect, yeah. in the United States of America. Now, they've been doing this since 90, before 1906, when the Americans got a great deal of faith in the Lloyds because Lloyds paid out for the San Francisco earthquake. And they, so, you know, they've always trusted Lloyds, right? Mm-hmm. So what happened was... Uh, somebody said that Lloyds were not complying with competition laws. Yeah. And the US lawyers got together a class action to say that people were being ripped off because they weren't com- uh, they weren't competing and it was a, like a monopoly in a sense. And so therefore they could sue them for damages. So the lawyers created a massive law case against Lloyds of London, knowing that Lloyds of London have got millions and millions of pounds. And I have discussed this on several occasions with somebody I know, on many occasions, who's involved in this case, because his syndicate is one of those being sued. And from at the end of the day, through all the discussions I've had with him, I said, there is no court case against you. Yeah. None whatsoever. However... Because a court case is brought against them by lawyers in the United States, even though there is what is referred to as no cause of action, lawyers are prepared to pay about a hundred million pounds in damages just to get rid of the case because the legal fees will increase and increase up to millions upon millions of dollars. Wow. So in order to get rid of it, they're prepared to take a hit even though they haven't done anything wrong because that's it's like bite the bullet and get rid of it, you know, yeah. Yeah. damage limitation. And it smacks of this, with this Virginia Dufre, because, as I've said, she was of legal age and she went, she continued to do, to hang around with Epstein in the knowledge that she was going to have sexual relationship relations with men because there doesn't seem to be any denial of that, apart from Prince Andrew says he didn't do it, which is fair enough. Maybe he didn't, or maybe he did. I don't know, but there's no proof of that. But she kept kept on going back for the same thing to happen over again, yeah. which implies most definitely that she was a willing participant. So it seems to me 
that a lot of this is we have power we can turn around and humiliate you in public because if they uh, wash Prince Andrew's dirty laundry in public, that will bring shame against the royal family, even if they win. Mm. Mm. Nobody wants their sexual activity to be broadcast on the world stage. No. No. That's what would happen. So it, in a sense, it seems to me that, that it's almost definitely... Prince Andrew is turning around and saying, look, we need to get rid of this because yeah. the royal family cannot be dragged through the mud anymore on this story. So we'll pay whatever it takes to get rid of this woman. And that's what they've done. And they're trying to do their best to maintain their international reputation because it's been tarnished so much. And it, and it may well be that the US lawyers are just after money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've no, I know of, I was involved in a case where in England, where a Spanish lawyer um, created a case where there was no cause of action. I believe there was no cause of action, and I ended up in a court case against him for four, about four years, and it was dragged out for four years. Even though I wrote a letter at the beginning saying we will comply with anything, we'll sign any legal documents you require. Yeah ended up in a court case for, well, I think it was about three and a half years. That's my own personal experience. So lawyers can create a case from nothing just to gain fees. Because they're lawyers and we're all told that law aren't lawyers great and that you can trust your lawyer, we believe it. But when yeah. you get down to the nitty-gritty, you'll find that that's not always the case by any shadow of a doubt. And I think, you know, you mentioned the royal family, um this has been hugely damaging for the royal family in in Britain. Um, and also before all of that, you had Harry uh, upsetting the royal family uh, and those uh, around it. Uh, it's been a very damaging time. Yeah, it has. It's been incredibly bad for the reputation of the United, of the United Kingdom all round. It's been incredibly bad for the reputation of the royal family. It's terrible for the reputation of Prince Andrew. Um, it's awful for the. It's awful, really, what's happened. Mm. So, you know, it, it, it it's it's. Um, it, they do need to get rid of it as quickly as possible, and I think that's what they're trying to do. They don't want Prince Andrew as a member of the royal family standing there and giving evidence in court, being cross-examined by some, let's call them dodgy lawyers in the United States who will ask anything about anything because there's no holds barred in civil litigation or criminal litigation in the United States. It's not the same system. It's not. I don't think the United States system is a good legal system. I think it's it's overwritten. It's overcomplicated. Lawyers can use their position to manipulate situations just so they can make money, as can UK lawyers. Who UK lawyers often do that, but it seems to be prevalent in the United States. I'm not saying it is prevalent. I'm just saying it seems to be. Seems to be. All right. Um, coming up next, we're going to be talking about uh, Jimmy Carr's. Uh, Roma joke on Netflix has caused a lot of you to uh, be very angry about about that. This is Strange But True Ready. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. Back after this.
Get the latest breaking news to your phone on Twitter right now at us using our handle StrangeBTR. Contact us by email studio at strangebuttrueradio.com or visit our Facebook page by simply searching Strange But True Radio. Right then. In Britain, there's anger over comedian Jimmy Carr's Roma joke. I'm going to play it to you now. This is what he said on his new Netflix show. When people talk about the Holocaust... (laughs) When people talk about the Holocaust, they talk about the tragedy and horror of six million Jewish lives being lost to the Nazi war machine. But they never mention the thousands of gypsies that were killed by the Nazis. No one ever wants to talk about that because no one ever wants to talk about the positives. So that was that was on Netflix, uh, Phil. Uh, People were laughing and, and, and clapping to that. It's a very difficult one. Um. But now, in this day and age, that's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say. Everybody's woke. A lot of woke people would be, you know, Mm. up in arms about that, and as they are, and I understand that, and I'm not saying they're, in this case, I was pretty shocked, I have to say. Um, 30 years ago, everyone would have thought that was just funny. So it's really different. No one would have batted an eyelid. I mean, because people, I don't know if people ever say, can you take a joke? Can you give it as good as you get? Used to be. I mean, when I was a lad, I used to carry bricks to bricklayers all day long and load out, you know, cement, carry bricks, loads of cement on my in hods on my shoulders, and I used to get sworn out and shouted at and <laughs> called all the names under the sun. Yeah, and, which I thought was actually quite amusing. It yeah. would be. I'd be going for psychotherapy now because of that. Oh, yes. And they would all be sacked. Yes. None of the bricklayers would have been able to have a, hold a job. Um, you know, it makes it worse. That job I used to do is now illegal because they say it's too dangerous because you used to have to balance the hod on your shoulder and then run up and down ladders with one arm, you know, with, not, with one arm, basically, because mm. the other was supposed to be holding the hod. But you used to just balance it and run up and down and no one really cared. Mm. There was no and safety to speak of and we just thought it was funny it was good fun i loved it it must be very difficult for comedians nowadays um me me and my partner tom were watching um we were watching little britain um i'm sure many of you know little britain uh we just found a youtube clip because you can't you know watch it on the bbc anymore because it's been banned um so we watched it on youtube and 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 actually yeah they uh, They've they've got Bubbles De Vere, who's this massive fat lady who walks around a hotel naked, um, <laughs> you know. That, and they've Why got not? and they're both dressed as. There's another clip where they're both dressed as as ladies. Uh, oh, that's, that, a, that's a good one. Uh, that would that would set off the trans community. Um, what else have they got? They've got the they've got a, a quite well a very. Ra- we were laughing. I was laughing 10, 20 years ago at this. Uh, but there's one where um, she's given some cake and she realises it's, it's made by an Indian lady. And so they projectile vomit all over the person that's made the cake. I, I mean, that is racist. But yep. 20 years ago, we were laughing at that. and, and it, You could take a joke. I don't know. It's just... The idea it's a little bit crazy the way the world has gone with comedy. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're not allowed to, if you offend somebody, then everyone's up in arms. I mean, HR seem to think that if you're offensive towards anyone, you can lose your job. I heard a story of someone lost their job because they called someone fat. Yeah. Well, maybe they were fat. Are we not allowed? We do. We have to live in this fantasy world where we're not allowed to say things how they are at all. <laughs> Does it all? Do we all have to create an, an, some bizarre illusion? I mean, you know, it's. I find it all really, really weird, mm. and I find it dangerous because it's. A, you know, it's perfectly except. It's perfectly legal to call someone fat or skinny. If, you, 
if you you can't and offence if they're saying that you mustn't be you might not you mustn't say this because it might offend someone well you see offence is subjective it's it's how the person perceives it to be so you can't say how they're going to perceive it so therefore if you are afraid of offend you can't say things without offending somebody somewhere no it's possible you know if you say anything remotely controversial it might it probably will offend someone so does that mean we're not allowed to discuss things in the event that we might offend somebody yeah. which means the underlying trend is that we're losing our right to freedom of expression and what the the problem with that is that freedom of expression is really important because once you start telling people what they can and cannot say, you're telling people how they can and cannot think. And that means that you're starting to control them. And the first sign of a totalitarian government, i.e. right-wing fascist government, is language control. And say, for example, in certain... Uh, regimes throughout the world in the past and probably today if you said the wrong thing against the wrong politician and someone reported you that for that then you could be arrested and put in jail and possibly murdered by the state because that has happened in the past and it can, and it's probably happening now mm. so if you went up against the, say for example if you said something against possibly the Chinese government in China and you said it online, you could be arrested, taken away, and never seen again. And what, so that's, do we want to live within that, and where are we going with all this? And okay, I don't think you should be rude about gypsies necessarily, um, and that that is a pretty, that, that joke is to me a bit too extreme, it's a bit near the knuckle. Yeah. Um, I, I do find war jokes where, uh, you know, talking about jews and romas and 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 i do find that quite insulting yes, and it's just because we all knew we all know the horrors of war and if you don't know the horrors of war you need to read up on it it was just terror a terrible terrible time and how that can be That's turned it. into a joke I don't, I don't really get that the irony is the people who who killed the jews were the people who were telling people what they can and cannot say? They stopped people being able to have freedom of expression. They burnt the book. They burnt books that mm. weren't regarded as uh, in line with company po with party policy. So, you know, in a sense, the 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 woke people. In a sense, this is really important. In in a sense, the people who are saying you can't say this and you can't say that are defending fascism. They're defending right wing, and so they would be defending a policy which was fundamentally what the Nazis used to control the people. Yeah. So yeah. you want to you want to be woke? You you're if you're woke, in effect, you're defending the Nazis. So there's a, there's a kind of an irony there, and there's no getting away from it. You, we must be able to retain our freedom of expression, and we must be able to offend people. You know, you can't just – otherwise, everything – we can't discuss things. If we don't discuss things, nothing develop, de develops, nothing changes. You know, the fact that the BBC weren't talking about the fact that – no one was talking about the fact that Jimmy Savile was an, an abuser of children. Oh, no, we can't talk about that. It might offend someone. Guess what happened? Mm. You know, how many people were, were were lives were, you know, damaged irre, irreparably because of the conduct of someone who could have should have been outed straight away, but just it wasn't the done thing to talk about it. So what are we doing? Are we suppressing this now? See, that's one another consequence of not talking about things. Now, I don't agree with what. Let me say, I do not agree with what Jimmy Carr said in any way. But I defend his right to say it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and that's a kind I of a dichotomy. There's a dichotomy there. I don't think he should have said it. I don't think it should be said, right? But he should be allowed to say it if he should, if he wants to. You know, and if people are offended, they say it's offensive. Yes, okay, they, that can be offensive. But you know, I watch TV programs now where the, the comedy, they're not sure what to do with comedy. You, you, there, there's a program called Cheaters, and it's quite uh, upfront about sexual stuff. I mean, there's, they, show yeah. they show masturbation on it, and I think that's disgusting. 
but that's allowable and no one's offended by it. I, now, it, back in the day, that would have been... T- all the time that everyone said, oh, they were very offensive in the 70s, they never would have gone near any of the sexual stuff. Sorry, this is called Cheaters. Now. What is it, a documentary? No, Cheaters is a, is a drama oh. about two people who cheat on each other. It's actually very interesting. Oh. I quite enjoy watching it, apart from the... Well, apart from the sex bits, I mean, I find them a bit offensive. It's if very I'm old, very old fashioned, does that feel? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm I, ancient. <laughs> Bloody hell! Anyway, I'm, you know, you know. So you get offended by that, and I, I, yeah, I, I do yeah, think, I, 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 I do, yes, I do, yeah. I do think that comedy and what people are offended, we've just become too. Apart from you know, I do agree with that. This what he's what. Uh, uh, Jimmy Carr said was was very very bad, and she probably shouldn't have said that. But we have become too sort of uh, sort of immature, really, and offended at nothing most of the time. Exactly. exactly. I mean, you know, I went into the, I went in, effectively to cut a long story short. I went into the bank the other day, and I said to the lad behind the counter, "You look a lot like Jimmy Carr, Jim uh, Rishi Sunak." <laughs> right, just as a light hearted comment. <laughs> And he ended up saying to me, you're racist. <laughs> How did that happen? No, I don't know. He looked a lot like, I said, just for a joke, I mean, it may not be funny. I said, you could do one of those, you look so much like Rishi Sunak, you should. You could do one of those looky-likey things and, you know, make a bit of spare money on the side just for like, as a light-hearted comment because he looked so much like him. <laughs> and he said, you're racist and I don't like it. And I'm, I said, there's something wrong with you if you think that's racist. It's just, you know, you may not think that's amusing. I thought it was amusing. Other people might, some people will think it's amusing. Other people won't. But, you know, it was just a lighthearted quip. Yeah. And yeah. what happened? I get called a racist. That's weird. <laughs> it is it's weird. Very weird. That's a weird world we're living in. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We are on News Talk and Strange But True Radio. Going to talk about the first woman in the US cured of HIV. Next.
This is Strange But True Radio. You can hear us on all the big podcasts. We're on Spreaker.com. We're on TuneIn. Uh, we're on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, iHeartRadio, and uh, even Echo Dots. I can't say the A word because it will set off my uh, Alexa in the corner of the room. And then it'll be listening to us all the- Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Thank you. In the US, the first woman is cured of HIV. Scientists have used stem cells to treat her leukemia, uh, but found it also cured her HIV as well. Uh, Phil, this is um, a bit of a, a scientific breakthrough, some would say. Um, wh- what's What's going on here? Well, what happens is they remove um, some bone marrow from uh, a, a woman who is shown to be resistant to leukemia, and they transfer that into another patient in order to um, use that immunity to combat leukemia. And they found a side effect of that was, uh, in this case, a woman who was of mixed race who contracted um HIV in 2013 and then four years later was found to have um, HIV as well uh, sorry H- and leukemia as well was given this treatment to cure the leukemia and a side effect was that she lost the HIV at the same time wow wow and she's been so, free of HIV now for 14 four months years. So 14? 14, 14 months yeah um, and without the need for any like real potent uh, treatments, stem cell implants uh, are, are supposed to be quite kind on the body, I believe. Yeah, well, they use them. Say, if you you are having chemotherapy, they remove some of your own stem stem cells, and then you have uh, chemotherapy because the chemotherapy destroys your own immune system, and then they put your stem cells back in again to start up your immune system again after the chemo's died down so the chemotherapy wipes everything out makes you very ill and because in, in that in that way they're able to destroy the cancer then they put your stem cells back replace your stem cells because they've been wiped out as well then you they give you time for your immune system to rebuild itself and those stem cells can be your a replace you're replaced by your own stem cells or by those of a donor and that donor has to be a mat, a close match and that match would ne- normally be a family a sibling or parent or something like that or of that nature uh, but it seems to me in this case i'm not sure how closely they'll be able to get a match with a stem cell um, for everyone, for people who have a natural resistance, but for some, in some way, I can't discover yet how they managed to cross over into using this yeah. form as a general medicine. It's amazing, isn't it? I, I've always been um, very interested in in health stories um, because of the the problems I've had as a as a child, I guess. Um, yeah. But are, are you amazed at, 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 at the scientific breakthroughs nowadays that we're having? I find it incredible that the, the way they do it. I didn't, you know, when I was when I before for many years, I believed that we they were manipulating molecular structure in order to create a new a new cure for something, but what they or treatment, uh, but what they're actually doing is they're looking around and finding what does nature do. So they're, they're saying, well, in this case, nature, there's a woman who was resistant, naturally resistant to leukemia. So they used her stem cell to cure leukemia in somebody else. They didn't create the cure. They found someone who already had a cure in their, a natural cure in their body, which is what is fascinating for me. So, so you know, GM crops, for example, this hmm. Understand where I'm going. GM crops, yeah. uh, generally speaking, what they do is they get they grow loads of plants and then they throw insecticide all over the plants, and some of the plants won't die because they're just naturally they've got a natural s- system in the plant, which means that the insecticide the, the insecticide doesn't damage that plant, and then they breed from the plants that survive in the knowledge that they can spray this insecticide which kills everything in the knowledge that if they breed from these plants, they've got a natural immunity to the insecticide. That's the same principle in medicine. So in medicine, that's what they're doing. In this case, they're looking for people who have a natural immunity 
and then using what they find in those people to cure others, which is interesting. But again, then there's lots of corruption in this as well at the same time. I mean, we can go into that if you want. But I mean, so that's that's what they're doing in this case. So right now, uh, this study is uh, aiming to follow 25 people, I believe, with HIV who undergo a transplant with stem cells uh, taken from umbilical cord blood for the treatment of cancer and other serious conditions. So no doubt they'll have some uh, more information. So it's um, taking place at the University of California, John Hopkins University in Baltimore, apparently. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe the cord blood transplants don't are more easily accepted by the recipient of the treatment. Mm. Because you, if they're not, then you're going to get graft versus host disease, which is where the host, uh, the person who receives the treatment, the body rejects the treatment because it doesn't accept it because it's not compatible with their body, and that's a problem. But that may be overcome by use of cord blood transplants in this case that's maybe what that's what they do that's amazing so that's helping to cure hiv for those people who've already been infected but yeah. I, i'm sure i don't know whether the listeners know this but because i'm a gay man i'm always i've always been um very read up on hiv because it's something that we all fear um but for those it's gay, gay and straight. Actually, they say they say. Uh, I was reading a news article the other day that there's more HIV uh, new infections between straight couples than there are gay couples for the first time, which is quite interesting. Um, and and also very shocking as well. Um, but you can you can take these HIV blockers nowadays, and uh, I know really? a few people who've taken these uh, the, the this this drug so you take it every day and you can have um, normal sex whatever normal is to you and not contract hiv which is pretty amazing well it'll stop you getting hiv it will stop you from getting hiv it's 99 percent uh say um uh will stop you from getting it basically in 99 percent of cases wow that's amazing I it is it is so you've got those pills being being taken by lots of people and now uh this this new study that's taking place that i see a future where there will be no hiv at all uh and it won't be very long until that happens so it's good news for everybody really hopefully that will happen but there are other things which are actually I find fascinating. When I go to South America, I find that the people in South America use natural remedies, which is kind of linked to what I was saying earlier. They use nature to cure uh, illness, and they have been doing this for thousands of years. And they know because it's handed down from generation to generation what cures what. I had a gastric in gastric problem cured by half a cup of green tea and it never it didn't come back so you know when you have when you have a problem uh with diarrhea when you go overseas often you know you have to take all these pills well i took pills they ran out after three days and then i was given a cup of green tea by a friend of a friend and i just perfectly healthy for the rest of the four months i was in south america and i went to some really dodgy places and i didn't have a problem at all which was brilliant i had uh, an inf- uh, inflammation on the nerve right the way across my shoulders which was quite which was excruciatingly painful after an accident which was inflamed for over six months they gave me a, a tea i had three three quarter pint glasses of a tea called chicha morada which is a a natural anti-inflammatory drink and um yeah that cured it 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 was next morning it was gone which is phenomenal and that had been treated by the nhs for five or six months i'm not saying the nhs bad but it was amazing um and then they told me that a friend my friend's ex-wife had breast cancer and uh, she was only 24 and when she had breast cancer uh, at that age you'd expect it to be expand rapidly i mean it's virulent and um, and uh, they cured her with by drink giving her various forms of 
natural teas and it was gone in six months completely with no chemicals no uh, no side effects nothing no chemotherapy just giving her plants so i thought well this is incredibly amazing and um i took this idea to various i, pl- I told people about this at various universities and other places and um i got a blank expression i got nothing really no one was interested and then from there on in um, I went around and asked at various places because all the markets have juice bars and the juice bars will give you health, healthy drinks. And I asked at all the, every time I went to a market, I went and had a drink at a juice bar because they're incredibly healthy. And I'd ask them about cancer and they all said the same thing. They all said it was the same plant. We're going to be talking about Elon Musk's brain chip trials next this is strange but true ready he's phil jones i'm phil keeler back right after this If you go to our website strangebuttrueradio.com we've got a few offers uh, you get a three month uh, offer of audible for I believe it's uh, 99p go there now you get that offer um, something I have uh, something that I like looking on our website is uh, Phil it's where our listeners come from let me just turn your mic on for a moment and uh, you can see the red blobs of the worldwide map on strangebuttrueradio.com. See where our listeners are from. Uh, we've got people all over the world in Louisiana, in America, Florida, Alabama. Uh, we've got people listening in Honduras, Peru, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh, Adelaide in Australia. I think that's where my friend Matt comes from. Um, who, who I used to work in, in radio with. Uh, lots of people in the United Kingdom. Algeria is popular. Nigeria as well. Uh, Ethiopia, Russia. Uh, in fact, all over Russia. All over Russia. Maybe maybe we're, we're maybe too popular in Russia, mate. We, we, we said some nice things about Russia last week, if you remember. Yeah. Um, Japan as well. Uh, yeah, all over the world. Sweden, Poland, Germany, Italy, Tunisia. Amazing. So thank you uh, to our worldwide listeners. Uh, keep tuned 
and uh, we'll uh, obviously bring you more news all the time. Right, let's talk about Elon Musk because he's... um, He's an interesting character. Elon Musk's getting into hot water over allegations of mistreatment of test subjects used in brain chip trials. Don't say it too quick. The idea is artificial intelligence or computers link with the brain to fix vision or hearing loss or just make someone much more intelligent. It sounds interesting, this, doesn't it? But a statement put to the US Department of Agriculture uh, claims monkeys had their brains mutilated in shoddy experiments and were left to suffer and die. Now, um, Phil, scientists are practising on monkeys uh, because there is a risk. Uh, There are bound, in my view, there are bound to be some deaths uh, caused by the discovery of of breakthrough science like this should that be allowed very well it's controversial in that nobody really wants to harm animals unnecessarily unless they're you know psychopaths of some kind Mm. um so i don't really want to see any animals harmed and it's a shame that they are some have died in this but as you've said that you wouldn't be alive if they hadn't done open heart surgery on pigs you That's wouldn't very be. true. I wouldn't be here now. You wouldn't be here because you they were able to repair a hole in your heart yeah. in 1984, was it? Uh, yeah, concept. 1984, 1985. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's so. In my mind, it's, it's. I don't like. I don't like seeing animals suffer, and I, I, I don't really want animals to to die in science. But unfortunately, we are the the top species, aren't we? Well, we wouldn't. Uh, animals die every day because we eat beef and we eat pork and we eat meat, basically. So, yeah. I mean, it goes on. We, you know, we can say we we live in cotton wool existence now, and everybody's afraid of a bit of blood and guts and things like that. But unfortunately, the true the reality of the fact is we all like many people like eating meat, and therefore animals are going to die. So, yes, it's very sad that monkeys may die in this research, but how many people's lives are they going to save by doing so? Mm. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a sad, you know, you can't make an omelette without breaking any eggs, as they say. Sadly, this is a case where animals are injured in this However, they did have, they Neuralink have recently released a video of a monkey that had been implanted with a chip playing the video game Pong using only its mind. Which, that's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. And so Elon Musk's argument is that he thinks that um, Pete will be able, they'll be able to... Um, repair if they can use create brain trips brain chips in a certain way they'll be able to enable people with uh, paralysis to use a smartphone with their mind faster than someone using their thumbs clearly if they can get a monkey to play pong if they can do if that's true um and also uh They'll be able. To, they're talking about making people who have spinal injury to repair that spinal injury, so that it, they, they they can walk again, which would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, and various other disabilities may be able to be resolved by the use of microchip technology that's implanted. Um, they've already successfully implanted artificial artificial intelligence microchips in the brains of a macaque monkey named Pager and a pig named Gertrude. And they're talking about running tests on humans. And so uh, this could be uh, fantastic for humanity. I mean, and for those people who are disabled as a consequence of injury, may be able to uh, have some in the future technology where that that is no longer a, a problem and they don't they can dispense with their wheelchairs and uh yeah live a normal life well i don't know whether they're looking into helping dementia sufferers because if you're putting sort of chips in brains it could help it could help them couldn't it like it, as being used as a sort of memory what you mean like someone like boris johnson so he can get his facts straight is that what you mean well you could you could also use it on our prime minister who obviously tells yeah, well, the truth all the time 
put it put a brain chip in the mind of most of the Tory party in order to, for them to get their facts straight and try and work something out with some semblance of logic instead of fallacious policies, that kind of thing, is that what I mean? That, that could work, I'd like to do that. Well, there is a pro- there is a problem with this. <laughs> Mind control could be a problem, and it will be a problem. What you could do with these chips is, when they're going to lie, when the Tories are going to lie, it has it brain zaps them, <laughs> and they and they do like a robotic dance in Parliament. Yeah, that would mean we Boris Johnson wouldn't be able to talk. Would he? I think that would be great. Uh, that's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio. News talk for a mixed up generation with Philip James and myself, Philip Keeler. Losing my voice again. Uh, join us each and every Saturday evening for a new podcast to download on trending news stories of the week. We're available to download from around 20 hundred hours British time. Take care of yourselves. See you next week. We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. Still nothing in the news on £50 billion that's disappeared on contracts that were awarded unlawfully by the Tory party during the pandemic. That's £50 billion has disappeared and no one's saying a word. Well, if you want your news, that's strange but true. Look, they're all right, aren't they, really?